Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna take a look at Beaver Builder, a page builder for WordPress. Hey everybody, welcome back to Plugin Tut, your home for handcrafted WordPress plugin tutorials as always. Your host, Matt, and today we're taking a look at Beaver Builder. Again, uh, this is going to be an overview video. Don't come at me with the pitchforks and torches if you're a, a raving fan of Beaver Builder uh, like the Divi raving fans do to me over my Divi uh, overview uh, video. Uh, again, I'm going to be diving into Beaver Builder and sort of just going at sort of trying to use this. Um, it's unfortunately, unlike my Divi video, not for the first time. I have used Be Beaver Builder in the past, but there are some elements that I have never de uh, dove into because I, I don't use it uh, on a daily basis for sure. And I've never used it on a WordPress project before just because I haven't had one uh, that calls for it. So a couple things. I am using the agency package here, and there are a few options in here that uh, you might not get, certainly on the free version of Beaver Builder, which you can get at WordPress.org or this website, wpbeaverbuilder.com. Uh, but there are some other things in pro and standard that you might not get. So for 99 bucks, you can install an unlimited sites. Uh, however, you, d you do not get the Beaver Builder theme with that and is not multi-site capable. Moving up the chain to uh, 199, uh, you do get the Beaver Builder theme and uh, the only thing you and you get the multi-site capable, but you don't get any white labeling. Um, white labeling only comes in the agency model, which I'll be demonstrating today. And just real quick, I'll show you that. Uh, the white labeling is... Uh, your ability to brand Beaver Builder, right? So if you didn't want your client to know that you use Beaver Builder, a page builder to build their website, uh, you could uh, you could change the branding of that, right? You could switch the logo. You could change the plugin name from page builder to, uh, you know, Johnny's Builders, uh, Sally's Builder, uh, whatever you want to do. Now, I'm of, the, I'm of the pedigree that you should uh, tell your clients what you're doing, uh, that you, you let them know that, they, that you've used the page builder. And I'll do a separate video because page builders are a funny market. People are very excited about page builders. It gets the job done for them. They don't need to learn code. They can build sites for customers with pointing and click, and they can make some good money doing that. And I think a lot of people are, are holding on to those margins right now. Uh, but I'm of the mindset of letting your client know that you use the page builder because it doesn't matter if it's their first site. Uh, if it's the first time they've gotten, uh, you're, you're building a website for them, but what it, what it does, what a builder does is adds some overhead to that. So there's extra code. And for sure, if you're building the site for the first time, and then a year from now, a year and a half from now, the customer comes back to you and says, oh, we saw this WordPress theme. Uh, that we that we really like, or we get this new marketing initiative. Can you roll out some pages? And they want to get pixel perfect or exact, or they want to switch themes. It's important to know that if they're on a page builder, there's going to be some co complexities of migrating away from that. Uh, there will be some there will be some complexities of extra code for page builders. And this isn't just Beaver Builder. This is everyone. And again, Divi was the most notorious for it. And Divi 3.0 still, if you disable it, it just spits out short code. What and that's what Beaver Builder tries to not do. And we'll demonstrate that maybe in a, in a later video. So be aware uh, of what you're doing when you're reselling this stuff. Look, in the back end, everything is pretty standard. Uh, my sort of general feedback, again, this is an overview video uh, where I give you some of my own opinion from doing this stuff for quite some time. Uh, yeah, it's point click. Everything works. Basic modules, advanced modules, same sense as Divi or any other page builder out there. I would say that the overall look and feel of Beaver Builder is fairly WordPress traditional. I'm not ooing and eyeing at anything here, and it's not a bad thing. I'm just, you know, it is what it is. And I think that sometimes, uh, you know, the nice silky uh, gooeyness of some of these more advanced page builders can get people caught up in, in wanting to use them because they look so good, right? Uh, Divi, certainly one of them. So you can come back here and you could say things like, look, I, you know, I want to disable some of these advanced modules on the site. Uh, I don't want people to be able to use them. I don't need to see them in the editor because I'll never use them, that kind of thing. You can come back here and say, look, I only want page builder uh, options available on pages. Uh, and uh, maybe you want to use it on pages and posts, and you can do that. It says here, note, not all custom post types may be supported. I'm sure that's because some plugins create custom post types. Um, but if you were to use your own custom post type, 
uh, you could probably uh, just enable those here. Again, these are some of the, the finer details that I have not uh, dove into. This is just a straight dive in video. Please don't freak out uh, in the comments. Enable templates. You can enable templates for admins. You can enable template data exporter. And uh, look right from the description, enable the template data exporter under tools, template exporter to export a special data file that can be used to include templates within themes and plugins. This here would be something where if you were using WooCommerce and you wanted to you know, build specific templates for that and you wanted to export that data, you could do that here. I'm not going to go through all this stuff uh, right now, but you can do some of the role settings uh, like Divi does. You can lock it down to say people who only have roles that only have edit posts uh, can use this stuff. Or if you want to switch that, you can um, cache. This is interesting to, that they actually have uh, a little bit of cache built in to uh, the page builder. And if you go ahead and click this clear cache, sometimes uh, perhaps you're making some changes. You don't see things happening. You can come back and clear the cache and see if... Uh, if that does the trick, let's take a look at what it's like to build a page uh, using Beaver Builder. I'm going to go to my homepage. And again, it's only because Divi is fresh on my mind because I am doing a series on Divi 3.0. One of the biggest differences here is Divi is actually, uh, Divi 3.0 is actually a theme with the Divi Builder built into it. Now, Div Elegant Themes has a separate Divi Builder plugin, but I believe that is not upgraded to 3.0 yet. So you're, right now, everything is built into the theme. Um, Beaver Builder acts as a theme and a plugin, and you can run that, and you can run Beaver Builder separately from that. And the difference here is Elegant Themes, you can actually build your pages in the back end um, of your WordPress site without having to do it in the front end. Beaver Builder is all in the front end, right? So we're going to click on Page Builder. Give this a second here to load, and we're going to be dropped into our uh, the front end of our site. Now, I can say one of the best things that Beaver Builder does that Divi doesn't do, which they could do to really alleviate some of the challenges of first-time users who don't read documentation, like I did in that video on purpose. Uh, the Beaver Builder guys and gals built in these little pop-ups. You don't see it here because I already did it before I already booted this up once. But it said, hey, I noticed that this is your first time using, this, using Beaver Builder on this site. Do you want to take a little tutorial? And it brings you to all little pop-up arrows, brings you to all the different elements and you can click through them and kind of learn to understand what they all do. It really helps you get um, an understanding of how this stuff works. So right away, uh, again, one of the things that I think Divi doesn't do right off the bat, which was, again, some of the confusion, is it just gave you a blank canvas, and it said sort of go to town. And uh, Beaver Builder is going to say, hey, look, do you want to load, a, do you want to load a, a layout, a template? And you can build your site based off of that. So... Here I am, I've got this section here, it says drop a layout or module to get started, and I can drag this stuff over. Now one thing, again, as I provide some criticism as I go along, sometimes I find myself just clicking on these uh, elements, like just like in my brain, I'm thinking I, I can just click this and that'll drop it in. No, I, I find myself doing that a lot, uh, and, the, and the whole sort of navigation menu goes away. You have to drag this stuff over, uh, so do remember, uh, Remember that as you go along. But if I were to build a typical sort of businessy site, you might do something like this. Again, just like we did in my, my Divi video, you've got this masked uh, hero area here, three services, you know, and then maybe uh, another one uh, below that, which, you know, could be, you know, your blog role, your testimonials, that kind of thing. So let's just try this real quick. One of the things that uh, I got hung up on in the, again, Divi video was setting that image and then dropping some content in there to build um, something like, I don't know, let's see what Beaver Builder has on their homepage, like maybe something like this, right? So I recognize that this is an entire row if I hover up here, and this is a column within that row, okay? So let's just click on settings. And right off the bat, we have our height, our width and our height, and maybe that just because Beaver Builder does it right up front uh, and I find it a little bit uh, just easier to understand. I can just set everything here to full width. I can hit save. Now what you'll notice is I still have this, I still have this column that's right here, okay? But I'm gonna click on row settings one more time. I just wanted to show you that. And we can switch the background color to a photo or excuse me, we can change the background type from color to photo. And then I can select the photo Let's select one that's big enough. This one's 1920. Is this 1920? Yeah. 
uh, let's go with this one because it's easier to write text on. So I can set that right to the background and um, here's that full width image, right? Here's that full width image and now I can save that. I can go back to add content and I can add in, um, let's see, let's, let's use an advanced module because it makes a little bit more sense. Let's say call to action and see what happens here. So this is our call to action. We can do something like this. So we can say, ready to find out more. Uh, the answer is yes, I am ready to find out more uh, and drop us a line uh, for a free quote, quote. Okay, no problem. So let's go heading tag. Let's make that H1. And let's make text colors white. See if that changes it out so you can see it a little bit more. Yes, yes. Background opacity, we're gonna leave that the same. Layout, we're gonna leave, what does stack do? We do layout stacked. Ah, there we go. Alignment centered. So now we can say ready to find out more. That looks a little bit more sort of appealing here. Um, and let's, I'm gonna leave that all the same. Button, I can do before text, after text. Oh, that's the icon position, sorry. Um, you can say click here to learn more. And, you know, again, if you're building a, a business site, you always want to make that the most appealing thing that you can do. You can link it up, same window, new window, that kind of thing. Button colors, you can change all that. Now, one thing that you will notice is... Uh, what do I start? We can fade in. Divi does that too. That's pretty cool. So you can fade in and sort of make that change. All right, we're going to leave that. Uh, we're going to leave that as is. So one of the things that I'll notice right off the bat is, and again, I had the same challenge with Divi, is the heading size. Oh, I can actually move this to custom. So you'll see, I find that a little bit more a little bit more intuitive than what I saw with Divi. And again, this is not a Divi versus Beaver Builder thing, but just in terms of the options, I can make that uh, a little bit easier, or I found that a little bit easier. So I can make that 64 pixels and I've created my nice little hero area, right? So again, typically people come in here and they put their services. So I did find myself always sort of clicking in here. Uh, and one of the things, again, in contrast to Divi is you could just click right in this element and drop in, um, you know, a new module, uh, much like Beaver Builder, uh, you could just click in this area and you drop, or you can't click in this area, sorry, uh, you'd have to drag this stuff in. So I do find that maybe a little bit more cumbersome uh, than Divi. So I'm just gonna throw some text in here, text, text. And I can just duplicate this stuff, and hopefully drag this over here, duplicate this stuff, and drag this over here, okay? <clears throat> so I might do th I might do something like you know start to go and put in my services, go through and start building out my logos. So I just feel like uh, on in terms of Divi versus Beaver Builder, because I'm in it right now, Beaver Builder seems a little bit more um, out of the way. Like things aren't getting in the way. Like even though I can hover over this stuff, I feel like I'm always working in these little areas. Whereas I feel like Divi, sometimes you feel like there's all of these buttons overwhelming. Again, as you get used to it, you understand it. Uh, it's no problem. But you can see here that with a blank canvas, it's going to take time. Like if I wanted to build this out, like I, I got that background image there, no problem. Um, but you could see that it might take some time to kind of build out these pieces and you need to have a plan in place or or you can just load up one of their templates uh, so that's the template right here it's called fashion freaks i can actually replace existing layout that will uh take out the uh the layout that i just built and you can see that everything's ready already it's it's everything's there these nice effects in the background the text is already adjusted uh already there for me um, all the little finer details are there and Layouts is a great way to start. And I've done a layout video already for Divi. Um, and I feel like th this is the best way uh, to start with these types of page builders. Um, I think it's great that they give you a blank canvas to start from, um, but layouts are definitely where, uh, where it's at when you just want to see something that's already been created and just go in and tweak it to your brand's you know, color scheme or photos and things like that. What I do find interesting is our, that both themes use the customizer for the uh, 
the details of like the headers, the footers, and other sort of global changes throughout the website. So if I wanted to change my website logo up here and font colors and things like that, I'd go into the traditional WordPress customizer, go to header, go to header layout, uh, and then I would do things like navigation on the left, nav navigation on the right, nav centered, um, and that'll put, oh, I would imagine once that finishes loading, that yep, puts the, the navigation right there. Um, so it does all that that sort of traditional stuff that you would expect it to. Um, header style, again, uh, background colors, text colors. If I change the background color, that should change it to like a darkish gray. Uh, as soon as it's done loading, these images are probably a heavy asset on that. Yep. Uh, link color, because that is a home, that home page or that site title is linked. It's blue. So it's going to change that. Uh, I just want to change that to white. You can see that turns into into white, and then you could go in and change the font style, font family. You could make it a little bit bigger. Oh, that's the navigation. So that's the nav style. Um, let's see where they put the header layout. Header style. <laughs> I'm blind. Header logo. Here we go. Header logo, font size. You can just make that a little bit bigger. Um, change the font text. Uh, change it to a, an image if you wanted to upload an image, that kind of thing, okay? So all the traditional stuff is built into the customizer. All in all, I think Beaver Builder is another uh, great page builder. I think that if you are looking to build pages, um, you know, with WordPress, without code, this is definitely one of your leading choices. Um, but let me know what you think in the comments. Do you use Beaver Builder? What do you think uh, on how it works? What's your experience with it? We'll dive deeper into it in other videos. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what I thought about the product. Again, I think it's very, it's not as, you know, snazzy as a Divi. It's not as, you know, gooey and, and pretty as a Divi. And it maybe doesn't do some of the other things that uh, I like about Divi. Like you can save the rows and modules, uh, but I just feel like the whole saving library in Divi might be a little bit more robust uh, if you're taking uh, that stuff from project to project. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, Beaver Builder's heading in that direction, if not already there, uh, to some degree with uh, some of their options. As Beaver Builder, if you enjoy videos like this, go ahead, thumbs up, like it, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to Plugin Tut on YouTube. Thanks, everybody.